<laughs> Reanimated is an animated atrocity, and it's not just because Mr. Enter made a two-part review dubbing it as such. No, no, no. This movie is so much of an animated atrocity that Cartoon Network wants to forget about it. It's a film that's so bad that finding a copy of it was difficult because nobody wanted to pirate this shit. Imagine sucking so much that you end up being the one thing that internet people don't want to pirate. Then I did find a copy right here on YouTube, and it was unclaimed because nobody wanted to take credit for it. Let's talk about Reanimated for a moment. In the 2000s, Cartoon Network was undergoing a bit of an identity crisis. They saw how Disney Channel and Nickelodeon were raking in success after success in the live-action sitcom department with shows like Hannah Montana and iCarly. The guys in suits at Cartoon Network probably saw the numbers and wanted a piece of that pie, so they wanted to undertake that endeavor. And while C and Real wouldn't come around until 2009, they were already setting the stage. Reanimated was the first live-action TV movie, but it did do the Roger Rabbit effect of it being a live-action animation hybrid in order to justify its existence on Cartoon Network. This debuted in 2006. In 2007, the series Out of Jimmy's Head would air as the sequel to Reanimated. Reanimated was the pilot movie. During C. N. Reel's lifetime, Cartoon Network would air live-action shows that are now mostly lost media. That says a lot about how people wanted to watch them and how many of you were willing to actually pirate them. You'll notice a lack of sitcoms, and that's by design. Well, it's most likely by design. I don't have any confirmation, but from 2007 to 2008, the Writers Guild of America went on strike, forcing a delay in multiple projects. That was only a month shorter than last year's writer's strike, and you saw how destructive that was for the whole industry. It's possible for sitcoms to have been on the table, but they got scrapped because 1. CN Real wasn't pulling in the numbers they asked for, and 2. The sitcoms in questions required writers and the writers weren't working, so that got double scrapped. Now for Reanimated. I'll need to be reanimated as a lich after enduring this crap. The premise is that Jimmy is an average kid who can see cartoons. Why can he see cartoons? It's because he got hit by a train at not Disney World, got carried off to the hospital at not Disney World, and was given a brain transplant, the brain in question belonging to not Walt Disney. And now he can see cartoon characters. Let's get to problem one of the series pretty quickly. The absolute awful integration between animation and live action. These characters don't actually have any shadows, which give the impression they're actually in the scene. At no point do you believe that they're in the scene and aren't just floating on top of it. Now, you could say this could be a representation that these characters aren't real and they're just hallucinations. To that I say, can't you do something more creative that doesn't simply make this look cheap as hell? Speaking of poor integration, let's talk about the acting. The acting is not good either. Then again, it takes a lot of skill and practice to act and react to absolutely nothing. The former requires the latter, and I doubt anyone gave the cast the opportunity to do the latter. It really wouldn't surprise me that the casting director behind this thought this was DOA and decided to not care about the theater experience because pantomime would help the situation a lot more. However, I'm not sure if the actors are at fault or the writers are at fault because the script is absolute trash. I know people don't speak as if they're writing speeches, but the dialogue in this film drags because of how often these characters stutter and stumble over their words. And while this could be realistic, and I know for a fact it is realistic, I will remind you that this movie is 90 minutes long. You really can't afford to drag. Seriously, most of Jimmy's dialogue consists of stuttering and stumbling. You can always hear him muttering and mumbling. It's not like the actor can't act normally at all. He did voice Squid Boy from Wolverine and the X-Men, and he can actually sound decent in that. Speaking of the writing, let's talk about the plot. You know how Jimmy has the brain of off-brand Walt Disney because of that transplant he had earlier? Yeah, it turns out off-brand Walt Disney had a son named Sonny. And Sonny is such a talentless hack that he wants the brain because he's running his dad's company into the ground. Seriously, do brain transplant laws not exist in this universe or something? Jimmy steps in and uses his not-Disney brain to make the company popular again. 
and not Disney's son, tries to kill him and remove the brain because he wants all the glory and he wants the brain. And then he takes this girl hostage, only for Jimmy to save the day. Apologize to the friend that he wronged by being too busy running a company. The freaking end. Let's break this down bit by bit, shall we? The storytelling is an unmitigated disaster. Told through shoddy dialogue, there is some major dissonance between what we are shown and what we are told. Craig, for instance, is said to be Jimmy's best friend, but Craig is shown to be absolutely dismissive of Jimmy's feelings, even at one point saying he doesn't care that Jimmy was in the hospital because Jimmy wasn't there for him. Despite this asshole being his best friend, the narrative proceeds to act like Jimmy is in the wrong for prioritizing the company over Craig. You know, the asshole who said that he didn't care that Jimmy was in the hospital. Wow. The technical aspects of this movie suck. You can always tell the animation is separate from the shot, not helped by the acting, and not even the practical effects are good. It makes it pretty clear that this movie had zero budget. There is no entertainment value in the humor in this movie at all because it's under the mistaken belief that random and wacky equals funny cartoon humor. Jimmy has an alien sister. Why is she an alien? Does this take place in the future? Are aliens common the crowd shots because Earth opened up? Nope, none of this is explained. She's an alien because random equals funny. In a more competently written work, the wacky would balance out the mundane and vice versa. Think about Ned's Declassified or Big Time Rush. Both shows have enough grounding in reality that give them a nice contrast to the more wild moments. Wacky moments involving the weasel in Ned's Declassified, and for Big Time Rush, the coffee machine coming to life and then vowing to cover the earth in foam and proceeds to become a very massive misogynist. No context makes that not make sense, but it's actually hilarious. Wish the same could be said for this radioactive disaster of a movie. Let me hand out the sentences for the characters. Jimmy, for allowing the voices in his head to control his actions, is sentenced to an exorcism session with Wanda Maximov. For being the most inconsiderate prick in the film, Craig is sentenced to be beaten up by Matt Murdock. Robin, for possibly having the most stilted dialogue in this movie, is sentenced to get a PhD in pharmacology. Trust me, that dissertation will do you in. Jimmy's dad, for being a terrible principal, a terrible father, and a creepy man all around, is sentenced to being the student of Dolores Umbridge, specifically Dolores Umbridge's least favorite student. That's it for this video. Please consider liking, subscribing, tipping the channel on Kofi. This is Cyril signing off.